Welcome. <clears throat> you hear me coughing, sneezing. I don't have coronavirus. I have bad allergies today. I, I apologize. And we're picking up on our study in evil. We're up to number 11. And we're picking up a new topic today. And we're, Lord willing, we're going to finish this topic today because we try to get five subjects done. And this one only has four. And we previously done adjectives. We had three videos on introduction to evil. And then the rest of the videos we've done on adjectives, 34 adjectives describing evil. Now we're picking up number two, a bad deed. And what is a bad deed? It's when an action is committed that is wrong. And the object lesson of the evil and the impact of the evil. So, Genesis 48, 12 to begin, and there could be more than four. Maybe you don't like the four I chosen, and I hope that if you get each of the videos or audios, how you listen to this, or you listen live every week, I hope you get all of what we're doing so you get all the lessons. And I think that we have, we're page 9 of 54 pages. And I think with 54 pages, Lord willing, and the Lord tarries. And I don't know how many videos it's going to be. Nine pages now is 11 videos. I think if we get all of what we're studying now, we will have a complex of the word evil. And yet we're not going to look at every word of evil in the Bible, but majority of them. And maybe if I were to start the first place evil showed up, the, the, uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, maybe we started that and ended up with the very last evil in the Bible, but I decided to put them in categories. If I'd be wrong, and I confess my sins. But Genesis 48 verse 16 Jacob speaking, and he's blessing Manasseh and Ephraim, laying hands on them. The angel, capital A, Jesus Christ, which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, let my name be named upon them. That's why Levi is a whole separate tribe itself. They didn't get the inheritance. And Joseph is split here into Ephraim and Manasseh because of, because of the blessing of Jacob. Here's the Ephraim and Manasseh always here without the listing of Levi or Joseph himself. A little extra information there. So Jacob is saying that this angel, capital A, in the life of Jacob and any man, there is good times. And there are evil times. And we will see more of the definition of evil in the Bible as we go on in wealth. And we've seen enough definition of the word evil in the Bible. And notice how he says the angel redeemed him from all evil. A purchase, a buying back. That angel is the Lord Jesus Christ. The word evil here is also the sins of Jacob. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now when Jacob died, he didn't go to heaven. He went to Abraham's bosom. And when Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross and, and the graves were opened, Jacob went up then. Because he had been redeemed and following the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, had paid the penalty, had paid the price of God's blood. Acts 20.28 so there it is. And evil here is bad times and sin. So, can I say you're having a bad day and it's evil? Yes. If I thought evil was a sin and wickedness, that's why we're studying the Bible. 
If you have a day where you have done nothing for Jesus Christ at all, all for self, that's evil. You had a day where you're sick in bed and or in a hospital or you know you run to the doctors and doctors and I've had those days and you know day you gotta go to the post office you gotta go correct this bill you gotta go to the store you gotta get oh man now I gotta go this I gotta go do that and and you're praying while you're tra traveling you know you're thinking about your church member you're thinking about your family you're that's not an evil day I mean. Why? You're paying your bill. You got the bill straight out. You may get more money or you may lose money. Or you get stuff for the family at the grocery store. You get news or something, whatever you need from the doctor. What's evil? Well, you find out from the doctor an evil day. Is, well, because you were fooling around and being stupid on the ladder and fell down. I got to tell you, you got a broken leg. That's evil's result of sin of fooling around. So, when is not the good times? Genesis 50, verse 20. Genesis 50, verse 20. Joseph speaking to his brethren who sold him to the Israelites. But as for you, the, bre the, the brethren, Ye thought evil against me, Joseph, but God meant it unto good, to bring it to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Oh, look at that evil. It was evil that you took me, it's evil that you won me dead. That's the first place. Let's get that down. It's evil that you hated me because of my dreams. It is evil that you put me in that pit. It is e evil that you brought me out of that pit and sold me to the Israelites. Israelites. And then further, which Joseph didn't find out until later on, it was evil that you killed a goat, I think it was, and put the blood of the goat on his jacket. That was evil. And then it was evil to go back and tell their father a lie that some beast might have devoured Joseph. That's all evil. And Joseph and his brethren, Joseph's brethren wanted him dead. And some of them just, just get rid of him. Their thoughts and intentions of Joseph were not good, a bad deed. The thoughts, I said. Not just the action, but the thoughts. Which would be sin. Because Jesus said, Whosoever look upon a woman to lust after his heart has already committed adultery with her. Alright, you may not sleep with that woman. You may not physically bond to that woman. But if you're thinking about it. You're thinking about it. That's a bad deed. That's a sin. You're, you're at the bus stop one day. Whatever reason you're taking the bus. And you're standing up against the light post and across the street there's a bank. And you think, oh man, that bank must have a lot of money. Oh, it would be so great to knock off that bank and get the money and, you know, give 10% to Jesus and, and pay my bills and get a brand new car and go on a vacation. Thinking about robbery is just as much as doing the robbery. And now by your thoughts, you have done a bad deed. What's the bad deed? It's evil. A bad deed was Jacob saying that his life, his life had bad deeds, evil deeds. Here, Joseph is telling us that what you guys were thinking and what you were doing, thinking and doing, is a bad deed and it's evil. And so when mankind has thoughts or ideas, matter, or devices, means to hurt, destroy, or plot against another, 
That is an evil against. It's a bad deed against another being. And let me give you an illustration because I gave you an illustration in the introduction, which you need to go and get. Tobacco pro companies know their product causes uh, lung cancer, of all other things, and emphysema. Their evil, their bad deed is selling it to people legally over a, a counter in a store knowing full well that that product may, not all, may cause emphysema, lung cancer, may have them to, to die or not have enough money for their bills. And what's the evil deer of the of the tobacco user, smoker or chewer? The evil deer is you know it may cause emphysema, you know it may cause lung cancer, you know it may cause death, you know it's definitely wasting money. And your evil deed is you partake of it. Here is a sin. I have troubles in my life, maybe daily, hourly, maybe a week, maybe I go a week without uh, evil. It's not the good times and it's not the best intentions or thoughts is a bad deed called evil. Psalm 7 verse 4, Psalm 7 verse 4. Now, no, I've got these written down this this page here. If you want a copy of this page, um, I can get it printed out for you. You got a nice little spiral and a cover and a back cover. I can get it through you through Staples, and you know the price. I do have to file, and whatever costs shipping and handling to your to your job to where you are, if you want. But the book has the scripture. Notice I'm churning with the Bible to you because I may have made a mistake. Also, while I turn to the scriptures, it gives you time to turn to the scriptures. And I'm about to start saying, okay, Psalm 7 verse 4, you may not have got there yet. Sometimes I try to, you know, put more explanation into it to help you to get to the place in the Bible. But at least one thing, if I am too fast at times or all the time, I apologize if I am. You can pause and find a place in the Bible. And don't be ashamed if you're a new Christian or you're still growing. You don't know where Psalms are in the book. It's a, that's why they put the index. Learn. That's exactly what my pastor does in our church. You know, we'll go from Romans to Ecclesiastes. And then we'll go to John. And then we'll go back to Romans. And like, why don't we just stay in Romans? So you know where Ecclesiastes is, you know where John is, and then you can find Romans again. Alright, then we go over to Revelation, and we may go over to Genesis, and then we go back to Ecclesiastes. Wait a minute, we were at Ecclesiastes. Why don't we know how to say Ecclesiastes? You're learning. So, Psalms chapter 7, verse 4. If I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, Yea, I have delivered him that without cause is my enemy. So, okay. Give me some examples. You have somebody cut your lawn. And I'm someone, I, when I was a boy, I, I used to go around my, I got permission from my dad. And sometimes I went around with my dad's lawnmower. I would ask people if I could mow their lawn, or I would go during the winter and snow with my shovel, and I would go shovel. And there was a couple times where I went up to the door, and I knocked on the door, rang the door. Okay, I'm done. And they didn't give me nothing. They took it, They took an advantage of me. Well, what is that? If I had rewarded evil unto him, that was peace with me. I did my job, but they didn't reward me. So when a person has returned a bad for a good, 
you have done wrong against their doing right. This is an evil. Now, can I speak of Stolly Hayward for a moment? Can I throw a little my thought for a moment? Paul said, let me be a, a, a fool with a little folly for a moment. I'm going to make a statement here. and It's not Bible, but it could be Bible. And you may agree, you may not agree. You got a free will. If there was one time, and this is happening today. If there was one time in your store you had two cashiers. Rachel. Yeah, delivery so dogs in the park. If at a time that you have had two cashiers, apologize for interrupting, and those two cashiers rang out the customers and did what they were supposed to do. Now, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, is this something? Rachel, forgive me. There's only one, it should be three. Let's take care of afterwards. And I apologize for the interruption there. And now with the economy going down, you have, we've seen this over and over. You have one cashier working two registers. You got one person doing the job of two now. And you're not paying that person as two. You're not give I believe you're not giving that person their, their fair due. I believe according to this verse right here. That I apologize. There's something else going on here. I apologize. That this verse says, "If you have rewarded evil unto him that is with peace with thee." When you're paying one person to do the job of two. You're not rewarding them correctly. And there are other jobs like that. I, I, I work for a fast food restaurant one day. Not even a day. And I was to empty garbage. I was to mop the floors. I was to be a cashier. I was to make the fries. I would work, you know, you know, making the hamburger. I'd be filling the soda. And then I'd be doing the drive through And I'd be doing this. Wait a minute, you got one person doing a job of 20 and you're only giving them the pay of one? Now that verse says, If I have rewarded evil unto him that is at peace with me, you're making that person not at peace with you. What are you going to do? If someone, okay, I'm going back now to this lesson. That's the end of my thing. If when someone has ill-treated another for no cause, good or bad, when you have been given a good and you return them not appropriately, that's an evil. You go to the restaurant and that waitress or waiter gives you good service. I mean, they're timely. Even they're not so timely. I mean, you do. You have your drinks there. And then within time, she sees that, you know, your soda is half full. She comes over, would you like another one? And the only place I don't ever tip is, is at, at, the, at the buffet. But I better I give tip. Give a tip when we go to uh, steak and shit. You know, everything they, they check on you. You know, how was your meal? Can I, can I get you anything else? 
And it is well known fact with waitressing waiters and taxi cabs and the barber, they are known for you give them a tip. And if you don't, they cut your hair properly in the way you like it. You evil entreated them. You've given them, what did I say? A bad deed for their good deed. Let's try one more before we do the last one. Well, actually, well, we'll head first Timothy. I'll let you turn over there. Again, I apologize for the interruption earlier. They were not supposed to come that early. That's, that's why I'm doing this early. They were supposed to. But turn to 1 Timothy 6.10. Let me mention one more, a couple things more with a bad deed. You have a church. And your church has seating. Now I can show you some pictures of churches. I got pictures right now. I can pose right now. Wooden seats and wooden backs. It don't look very comfortable. But you don't have to stand. In church history and even in American church history. More so in England. You didn't sit down. You didn't sit down at all. What would you do? You stood. Or there were seating for those who were elderly or couldn't stand. How is the climate control in your church? Oh, okay, it may be too hot, maybe too cold, but is it better than what it is outside? All right, maybe the church air condition. We had one. I was church one time, and for two weeks the air condition weren't working. It was, but normally, how is the climate control of air and heat in your church? Is your church infested with flies and and bugs because there is no windows to shut? I mean. We meet, maybe going to meet again in the gazebo outside. We have, we have flies and mosquitoes and interrupt the service. And this one may not be so, maybe some churches, okay. But uh, yeah, I do know, actually, I do know a church that had a porta potty outside of it. But okay, in most cases, how is the facilities for the bathroom in your church? Are they well, I mean, is there a facility? You don't have to go out to the, to the to the tree in the way in the back, you know, this tree for the men, that in that area for the women. Do you? And maybe, maybe you're in the area where that is. Okay, I, I, but generally, how is the conditions of your church? Have they given you the best they could? Have they given you the good that they that they have can give you? And do you pay? Properly to the church. Now I'm not one for tithing. But I'll tell you. I above the tithe. Okay. We're not talking about tithing or anything. But I'm just saying. Let's just state this for a basic. Minimal fact. Of tithing. Which is in the Bible. But uh, I believe this teaching but let's just take a minute do you minimally tithe to the church so the pastor that feeds you is able to be paid and he's able to pay the bills of the church or the electric the sewer the the uh the water and whatever bills and taxes he may have for that and the the, the supplies that that church needs and the the resources that church needs. Are you paying that church for receiving the services that you get of and for God? Or are you giving your church a bad deed? Let's put this. Are you giving the church an evil deed? 
That, that, that barber, he gives you that. He gives you, I mean, that's exactly how you, you go in there and say, you see this movie actor? Yes, I do. I want my hair just like him. And that guy clips, combs, and everything. He does everything he does. And boom, he shows you the mirror. Man, you look just like that. And you paid $10 for the haircut. I don't know what I pay for a haircut. I, I gave him a 20 and whatever is extra. All right. And you, you pay for your haircut $5, $8, whatever you pay, $10. And that's it. Okay, the haircut's ten bucks. You give him ten bucks. You walk out the door. Where's that guy's tip for doing a good job? You have evil entreated him. You have done an evil deed. That that tip belongs as far as their lifestyle of living as an income. And an evil treatment of another for their doing good. And you treat them poorly. That's evil. First Timothy 6.10 For the love of money ooh, that, that, That's misquoted. What did they say? Money is the root of evil. Look at First Timothy 6.10 The love of money. That verse is so often misquoted. Is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted, uh oh, after they have erred from the faith, they're saved. But they turned their eyes into money and not Jesus. They turned their eyes to wealth and not the not God. And pierced them through with many sorrows. So what's this one? Money is not the root of all evil. Guns don't kill. Wow, I just got half the people in. All right, take a hundred dollar bill, take a dollar bill, five dollar bill, ten dollar bill, twenty dollar bill, a fifty dollar bill, and a hundred dollar bill, and put them on the table next to a loaded gun. You you take a pick, whatever you want. You take your favorite gun and you put it to that stack of money on the table, and you leave. And if no human hands or even could be animals, but that money is just left there on the table, you come back 30 years later. What evil has the gun done? Nothing. It may even start to get, I don't know if guns get rusty, or it started to get tarnished. And if you're going to have to use it, you may have to clean it. What, is, what has that money done in 30 years? Did it buy prostitution? Did it buy illegal drugs? Did it e illegal gambling and all that? That's, it sat there on the table. Now see, this is why we're studying evil. Guns don't kill. Now the person that picks that gun up and says, you know what, I'm going to go hunting because my family likes deer, beaver, roadkill, whatever you like. And you go out there and you shoot that animal for the purpose of food for the table. That's not evil. You take that money on the table. You say, thank you very much. And you go out and buy groceries. If you don't know how to shoot, you don't want to hunt. You go out and buy groceries. And you bring your groceries home for your family. That's not evil. But if you covet, as the verse said, you want and you desire and you can't have enough money and you'll do anything you can do to get more money, your love for that money is the evil. Whether you steal, swindle, deceit, or every evil way of getting that money that's not proper and according to the, to, to the Bible, either testament, that's evil. It said coveted. Covetous is a sin. Now you take that gun, you take that gun, you're going to misuse that gun to do harm to another. Maybe even for the love of money because you want more money and you're going to use it in a crime. That's evil. You're going to take that gun, you're going to put more trust and faith in that gun 
for protection than God and Jesus Christ. That's evil. Yes, a gun can kill. It can kill for good or it can kill for evil. This is why we're studying evil. That money can be used for good or that money can be used for sin. Evil. So money is not the evil. The love of money that I'm going to get it anyway, even if it's illegally got. That's the evil. So we have the excessive love of money. It's evil. When you treat someone poorly for their doing goodly to you, that's an evil. When you think or have done a wicked deed to somebody, that's an evil, bad deed. And then there are bad days in our life that are evil. And those are the bad deeds, an action or a wrong. 